<laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we're going to put air assist on it today. Uh, should help improve cutting as well as, you know, keep your lens cleaner. So I already pulled off our old plate and our adjuster and set those aside. So here is the new one and this is a 3D printing that I pulled off Thingverse. Uh, free one set up. There is a video um, on this one from the maker. So, <clears throat> and the link's on Thingverse. So it comes in actually three different parts. This one is where the laser module is going to be connected to. There is a little tiny piece in here that the screw connects, tightens this piece so that it won't slide around. And you just use a little screw and a nut that slides in there, and then it will adjust that piece. Also on here, if you take a look at the top, there is a hole, and that connects down here. Your hose can be shoved down in. Uh, it's actually pretty smooth the first half of it. Most likely where around here where it jogs, you get to the middle, it starts to become a little tougher, and it just takes a little while to get it down in. I'm going to use this because it's what I have. It does not fit exactly, so when we heat this up to bend it, I'm also going to try to waller it out just a little bit to where I can thread this in. It's made for a smaller one. I just don't have one. That's what I have, so I'll use it. And I'll probably just cut off the tip because we don't need the full long piece. So I'm reusing two screws that were in the module beforehand. They fit through there. And on the module, I am going with the higher side. And then when we bend this down, it'll be a perfect spot. All right, and that's how the module is going to be. Now with this new adjustment, I've got a whole lot more play up and down than I had before. So hopefully it will eliminate the need of doing this. Doing this will throw off where I end up pointing this. So hopefully I don't need to do that because I've got so much more movement. We're going to heat this up and we are going to point it down where it lines up with where the laser should hit the material. All right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to heat up the tip just a little bit, just the tip. And I'm just going to put this in here and I'm going to try to make it big enough that I can get this piece threaded in. So let's see what happens. All right, got it bent for now. We will go ahead and put it back on. We slide this piece back in. Actually, let's put this back on first. Slide the module back in. All right, guys. Uh, back after a few days and a quick Amazon order, the tip I could not get to work at all. So went ahead, rewatched the video, and figured out that he is using a 3D nozzle, a 3D printer nozzle. Um, so I went ahead and ordered just a few cheap ones in some different sizes. This is a 0.6. So let's get it on and if I want to adjust it later, I can just adjust the size out. But this is threaded, so we'll get it on and we'll get this on the machine. Alright. Watch out on over tightening this. It did start to crack a little bit. That also might be because I tried to get the other one in there. So now we've got that set up. We'll get it back on the machine. And actually, before we do this, while I had the few days waiting for the nozzle, I went ahead, 
I knew I was going to have to do it. Um, I also had a buddy print off uh, standoffs so that I can raise or lower the frame uh, to get the rotary under it. So I went ahead and mounted the bases onto an old uh, cabinet door. And let me pull that out so we can get it set up. All right, so it's got four bases, uh, four screws in each one. It sits down, all four sides. Um, <clears throat> so now I've got different sizes for each one, each corner, so that I can raise it up to get the rotary under it. Uh, this is what it's going to live on, and now it can go in the CNC enclosure. This will just sit on the waste board, and we can do all of our lasering in there. So, slide this back on. And then we can just tighten the screw back up. Now we've got that. I'm going to shift this around. I made sure to leave enough room in the back so that our little air pump will be able to sit right here. I will screw this down as well uh, later on. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Velcro in a few spots uh, the hose. I'm using Velcro instead of a zip tie so that it's not too tight. I don't wanna crimp it um, and I can just remove these if we need to make any adjustments. So I'm leaving extra at the top for adjustment of the Z-axis. So like I said with the Velcro, not too tight so that we don't constrict the airflow. All right, so I've moved the gantry all the way forward, made sure that there's enough hose, and I'm going to cut it off at that point. Now, if there's any issues, plenty of hose, so I can make adjustments later if need be. We'll get this plugged in.
here they are both fresh <clears throat> you can see here uh, around the S and the A and W where it scorches it and burns it coming through and on this one nothing anywhere looks perfect there is a bit of soot it just needs cleaned up a little bit but <clears throat> the outcome is just night and day all right so the speed on this was thousand millimeters a minute and 70 percent on the burn the other thing that I have noticed with this axis it can actually go too low and when you take it too low it hits the sides and does not allow for proper homing so you can't home if you have it set too low just keep that in mind don't mess up your machine I wanted to thank everyone for coming like and subscribe it really helps us out it'll help us grow more allow us to do more I want you to subscribe.